मानवता समाधान instruction manual for the human beings it is the glorious quran our final speaker for the day is abid waris of grade 8 at the age of 13 he has done quite well for himself alhamdulillah he has bagged many first prizes in the Peace Conference of 2013 and has won the General Proficiency Prize as well. His sharp and excellent memory is evident when he comfortably states the names of various Sahaba and Sahabiyat who feature in the seerah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad He aspires to be an aeronautical engineer but has clear-cut da'wah goals as well. He is good in English public speaking and possesses excellent debating skills as well. Lost in a maze? Unable to find your way? Well, our journey ought to have a destination. For a life without an aim is like a moonless night, dark and empty. Why were we created by Allah Almighty? What is the purpose of creation? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah al dhariyat chapter number 51, verse number 56. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I have not created the jinn and men except to worship me. I now call upon Abid Warif to answer the question for us. What is the aim of life? إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May the peace mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. The topic of my talk today is aim of life. The aim of our life, the purpose of our life, it is of the most fundamental principles of our religion. In fact, the basis of our entire theology that we have been created for is one noble goal. Our whole life and death, our purpose and existence is centered around four words. La ilaha illallah. There is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The very purpose of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing us from nothing into this world. The reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth the sun and the moon, the plants and the animals, 
the men and the jinn is but one. That is, la ilaha illallah. As for the humankind and the jinn, who have their own free will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala re-emphasized their purpose of existence. In the verse, that which I quoted at the beginning of my talk from Surah Dhariyat, chapter number 51, verse number 56. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And there is no reason for having created all of men and all of jinn except in order to worship me. So today, inshaAllah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will ask three questions and inshaAllah answer them one after the other. The first question, why do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why? What is the reason? Why do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The second question, how do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the third question, how do we perfect the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Three fundamental questions that every one of you should think about, should ponder, and should try to formulate responses to them in the light of the Quran, and the Sunnah. The first of these three questions, why do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you were to ask an average Muslim, if I were to ask you, why do you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Most of you would respond, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He created us. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He gave us everything we have. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He guided us, and so on and so forth. The net result would be, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of everything He has done for us. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created me, I therefore worship Him. Now this response, it is not incorrect, it is correct. To say that I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He created me, this is not incorrect. This is not wrong. One of the reasons why we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because He created us. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 21. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nasu abudu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum. O mankind, worship the Lord who created you. But it is not the number one reason. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of my worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need my devotion. It is not a business transaction that because Allah did this, I do that. No. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create me, would then He not be worthy of worship? And this is absolutely wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worthy of worship even if I do not exist and you do not exist. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's worship and His right to be worshipped is independent of my existence and your existence. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 15, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nasu antum al ilallah, wallahu huwa al ghaniyu al hamid. O oh mankind, it is you who have need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah is free of all wants, worthy of all praise. So to say, the reason why I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because He created me, it is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefits from my worship. It is as if I am repaying some favor to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is not true. To say, one of the reasons why we worship Allah is because He created me, this is true. This is true. One of the reasons why we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to thank Allah. But it is not the number one. It's not the primary, ultimate reason. The ultimate, foundational reason why we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because Allah is worthy of being worshipped. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worthy of being praised. Even our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
the best human being, the most blessed creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who perfected the worship of Allah as much as we human beings can do, doing sajda in the middle of the night, the masjid the nabawi in prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is reported in Sahih Muslim, volume one, the book of prayer, hadith number 1090. His wife Aisha radiallahu anha, she hears him in sajda. He says, Subhanak, exalted are you, O Allah. La uhsi thana'an alayk, anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. I can never encompass praising you, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I cannot do justice in praising you, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are only as you have praised yourself. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can praise himself the way that he deserves. I cannot do this. Even our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he admitted, I cannot do justice to you, O Allah. He is above what any one of us can do. You have three questions, remember? The first of these, why do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now for the second question, how do we worship Allah? So we said we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the reason of our existence. But then, how do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The response to this is that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by believing in specific things, by saying specific things, and by doing specific things. What are these things? They are enumerated in the famous hadith known as the hadith of Jibreel, which is recorded in Sahih Muslim, volume one, the book of faith, hadith number nine three, in which the angel Jibreel alayhi salam, he comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the form of a man and asks him a series of questions. And these questions, they elaborate, they elucidate what we must believe, what we must say, and what we must do. The first question that the angel Jibreel asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, O oh Muhammad, tell me what is Islam? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, Islam is based on five pillars. The first of these, that you testify, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. The second of these, that you establish your five times prayers. The third of these, that you pay your zakah. The fourth of these, that you fast Ramadan. And the fifth, that you go for a hajj. Didha, dandu, mulla bodhir abhav, prakita vishashir abhav, asachetan jibon japon. Dharmo ke, bhul bhabhe tula dhara. धर्मियों ग्रंथेर पुरी बात तोन एवं संस्करण जाता तो 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 पेते शकुल क्षेत्रे अमी शंग्राम करती शुद्ध प्रकाश करते कारण इटा तेरा अपना रोधिकार आर आमाद दायित्व शुद्ध टबल देखूं शुद्ध उन मोचन आज रात नौ टाए आप पुनः शाम प्रचार शकाल छाने सात टाए बांग्लादेशे पीस टीवी बांग्लाए The Prodigy Dai of Islam, Farid Naik. I challenge any human being to point out a single fundamental of Islam. The illustrious son of the world famous narrator of Islam, Dr. Zakir Naik. Motivating towards the true path. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Science without religion is lame, and religion without science is blind. With his thrilling words and inspirational temperament. Demanding dowry from the would-be bride is completely prohibited in Islam. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the one endowed with knowledge and wisdom. I am proud to be a fundamentalist Muslim. Dekhu, Kisho Taroka. परवर्ती अनुष्ठान पीस टीवी बांग्लाय प्रोफेसर सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम वाज़ आज़द ओ मुहम्मद टेल मी 
What is Iman? The Prophet وسلم, replied, Iman is that you believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His prophets in the day of resurrection and in Qadr, in predestination. Now he listed six that we must believe. They are in our heart. We must believe in them. And then the angel Jibreel alayhi salam asked, O oh Muhammad, tell me what is Ihsan? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, Ihsan is that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though you can see him. And if you cannot see him, then know that he sees you. Now this hadith is the famous hadith known as the hadith of Jibreel. And this hadith is the fundamental pillar of our religion. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah he said, the entire religion revolves around this one hadith. From this hadith, we come to know what we must believe, what we must say, and what we must do. We come to learn the six pillars of Iman and the five pillars of Islam. From the six pillars of Iman, we get our entire science of theology. From the five pillars of Islam, we get our entire science of fiqh. All of theology is around the six pillars of Iman and all of fiqh is around the five pillars of Islam. And I encourage all of you to study these two sciences. The sciences of what we call in Arabic as aqidah. The sciences of how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sciences of fiqh. So the second question was, how do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, for the last and final question, how do we perfect these aspects of worship? The response is that we perfect our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala primarily through two matters. The first of these two matters is knowledge and the second is humbleness, khushu and spirituality. The first of these two matters is knowledge, academic knowledge. And the second is to get from that knowledge to a level of spirituality, to a level of humbleness and inner taqwa. Now let's study the first aspect in detail, that is knowledge. Let me give you an example we all are familiar with, performing the wudu for the salah. It is recorded that the Prophet wasallam he used to do his wudu. It is reported in Sahih Bukhari, volume 1, the book of ablution, hadith number 186, in which the Prophet wasallam he called for some water, and he caused the water to be poured on him, and he washed his hands three times. He gargled and blew his nose three times. He washed his face three times. He washed his arms up till the elbows three times, and he washed his feet up till the ankles three times. And then he said, it is reported in Sahih Muslim, volume one, the book of purification, hadith number 553, that he said, whoever does wudu like this, how I have done, and then says the dua of wudu, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alone, without any partners, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. Allahumma ja'alli min al-tawwabin wa ja'alli min al-mutatahirin. O oh Allah, I ask you to place me among the repentant and the purified ones. Now let us get back to what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saying. He said, whoever does wudu like this, how I have done. And then says the dua of wudu, all the doors of Jannah, all the doors of Jannah will be open to him. When we read this hadith, we might have been doing wudu like this for 20 years. But simply read this hadith, automatically when we do wudu again, we will feel that excitement. And we will feel a sense of connection that we did not feel when we did not read this hadith. Simply having knowledge brings about an increased attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be it any aspect of your worship, be it a salah, be it charity, 
be it zakah, being fasting. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Al-Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 28. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Indeed, the only people who can truly fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the people of knowledge. When you have knowledge, automatically your level of worship increases infinitely until you cannot compare it to when you do not have knowledge. But it is true that you can have knowledge without spirituality. And this is very, very dangerous. And it is true. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from knowledge without spirituality. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to seek refuge by saying, it is reported in Sahih Muslim, volume 7, the book of supplication, hadith number 6906. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from knowledge that does not benefit. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now let us study the second aspect in detail. That is, increase in spirituality. Increase in feeling humbleness, increase in feeling khushu. And this increase is acquired in many, many ways. The first of these is by being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. It is reported that one of the scholars of the past, whenever he used to do his wudu, he would become pale with anxiety. He would become pale with stress. So much so that his companions asked him, why is it that when we see you doing your wudu, you become terrified? He replied, how can I not be terrified when I realize who I'm standing in front of? When I realize who I'm standing in front of, what was it? It was his consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, your level of khushu can be increased by understanding what you are saying. So for example, in our salah, how can we have khushu when we do not understand what the Fatiha means? How can we have khushu when we do not understand what is the meaning of Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la? Glory be to Allah the highest. Subhana Rabbi al Azim. Glory be to Allah the mightiest. Sami'a Allah liman hamida. Allah listens to those who praise Him. Rabbana walaka alhamd. To our Lord belongs all praise. When we don't understand these phrases, how can we have khushu? So to have khushu once again goes back to a branch of knowledge. That is understanding what you're saying. Also, having khushu can be increased by studying the blessings in each and every action of worship. And this too is a branch of knowledge. As I stated the example of the wudu earlier. At the same time, how do we increase our spirituality? Really, it is linked to knowledge. So in reality, the essence, the answer to the third question, how do we perfect this worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We can say the perfection of the worship of Allah lies well and truly in studying the religion. We have three questions. I'm going back to the three questions. The first question was, why do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What was the response? We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of who He is. The second question was, how do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The response to that was, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through specific beliefs, statements, and actions. And then the third and final question, how do we perfect the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What was the response? We perfect the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by studying. Because in the end, it is knowledge. We have answered all the three questions. In conclusion, my dear brothers and sisters, whenever you see an avenue to do some khair, go do it. Perhaps that one small deed will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah has accepted one of your deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted all of your deeds. 
Do not trivialize any good that you do. See every opportunity that you have. Take every single opportunity. Seize every opportunity for khair. Whatever it is, whether it's your salah, whether it's charity, whether it's the Quran, whether it's being merciful to fellow creatures and beings. Have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as you perfect this relationship, as you strengthen this relationship, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will dress you in the ranks of this world and in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with true iman. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the true action and deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with genuine love for him and his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to perfect our worship of him. Wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakallah, brother Abid. That was a purposeful talk. रहमान मदनी मुफ्ती काजी मुहम्मद इब्राहिम अक्रमुजमन बिन अब्दुल शेख शाहिदुल्ला खान मदनी हारून हुसैन उपस्थापन सम्मेलन सी देखे बिरल अनुष्ठान जालसाए ओलामा आज रात साढ़े नटाय पुनः सम्प्रचार सकाल आठटाए बांगलेश What would you recommend us to take as career after we pass our school so what exactly we should do what do you have to say about pursuing two fields together ideas brilliant strategy sustained the best profession is a profession of a person who invites people to last one of life avail the opportunity with dr zakir depending upon what is your interest but the main aim should be to spread the message of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to implement the convincing islamic come educational formula to excel in your career dekhun career guidance proti robibar raat 6:30 ta ap puno samprachar sokal 9:30 ta bangladesh e bis tv banglay